on watching Scrapple TV. Mark Brodzik with Lance Bangs here in Philadelphia. He's pushing his movie tonight at the Philomoka on Slint. Thank you for yeah. coming and talking with us. Thanks for having me over. Yeah, yeah. At some point as um, a kid, I was just bored of rock. And right after that is when I met Brian. Brett had been there from the beginning. And I recall kind of gradually sort of gaining access to like this group of people that seemed to be thinking interesting stuff. You'd see Britt and Brian and they were just like little kids standing around with terrifying giant skin heads and weird dudes in dresses. It was fucking heaven. Slint were a unique band. Like they were teenagers, they were kids. They thought about music differently than other people did. It's a feature length documentary about the band Slint and the sort of Louisville music culture that they emerged from. And began shooting footage in 1991. I was living in Athens, Georgia at the time and would kind of fell in love with that record when it came out that spring. And there's so little information about it. I don't know if your viewers have seen it, but it's this just kind of like a black and white photograph of these four heads floating in a quarry. And the original pressing, there's no band name on the front. There's no album title. It's just this kind of like striking image with no explanation of it. And it came out and there's no promotion at the time. They're, like they weren't on tour. They weren't coming through to different music cities. They weren't doing interviews or press or photo shoots or music videos. And so the record just sort of existed as its own object. And it felt like it kind of created its own world. It's these six songs that have all this atmosphere and weird dynamics and people are speaking rather than singing. It's not like a traditional rock thing where it's like blues derived with like some front man, you know, talking about heartache or whatever. It was this like other thing where it was like short stories and a very kind of striking piece of work. And I got really fascinated with like, well, who, who made this record or why, why did they break up or what's going on? And started driving up from Athens to Louisville, Kentucky and shooting footage, like trying to chase them down or find out what they were up to and, and would film in Super 8 of all the um, kind of parking lots or places I was staying while running around there and eventually pulled together these crazy stories and, and, and made the film over the years. Awesome. Yeah, it's a really important record. Yeah. Like I remember, like I, I loved it. I worshipped it. It was just kind of being an artist and that coming out of that post-punk and it was like, you know, the, the uh, minor threat when it's like the Fugazi, but then there was this turning over from that scene of punk into like, yeah, this crazy atmospheric, slowing things down. It was yeah. all emotional and driven. And when I listen to Explosions in the Sky, and like yeah. all that kind of stuff, I totally hear that record. Right on. That was a really uh, amazing time for music too. There was just, it was very transitional. Yeah, it was just, it's interesting when sort of the people that are the bravest or least reliant on repeating past forms start making music and then shift things to some new dynamic and then everyone has to kind of figure out like how to process that and then, and then it blossoms into its own new form. Yeah, I'm a huge um, David Paho fan. Oh, right on, in the spring. Slint's back together. They're going to do a few shows. It's not like quite fully back together, but they're they're doing a few performances here and there. Is it like the uh, bands reunite to do that epic album show? No, they're they're kind of trying to go looser than that and and not be overly reverent or trying to completely recreate that album in its in its original sequence. I think they're going to be you know kind of fucking around and, and altering things a little bit and playing slightly different arrangements or things that are kind of more in the moment or fun for them. Yeah, I'd love to. I think that's what I'm predicting or think is going to happen. <laughs> Who knows what will really. <laughs> so um, we want to talk about some of your other film projects. Do you have anything else? What's your next? Kind of a bunch of weird stuff going on right now. Um, Louis C.K. had me direct a film for a comedian named Todd Berry. Uh, Todd does a lot of great stand-up, but he, he has this one element that he's excellent at that comes up sometimes in his performances where he'll just start doing crowd work, like talking to the audience and then drawing weird things out of them and then not cruelly or mercilessly, but sort of like fucking with them or joking around with them. This was, uh, I did a show at the Trocadero with the old Tango, and there was like four bands and I went on first and people were pouring in. It wasn't, they weren't nice like you were and they were talking and shit. Anyway, dear Todd, I saw your performance on Thursday at the Troc and I must write, I was disappointed. <laughs> and so he decided to take the risk of doing an entire tour where he had no prepared material and was not doing any jokes, any traditional stuff he could rely on or fall back on that like would work, but would instead just go out and sort of like look at the crowd, 
and then wait for someone to kind of make a noise or laugh or get uncomfortable and be like, you, you there with a brown hoodie, what's up? You know, and then start getting people going. And so we, we shot an entire tour of the West Coast, starting down in San Diego and then going up all the way through to Alaska, um, making this kind of comedy special tour documentary film. And Louis C.K. is putting it out in a, about a week or so on his website. It's the same thing he did with his own specials where it's like yeah, $5 it's for anybody his, to... Yeah. I love his, his taking the reins of all his own production and you know the movies and his, his show's amazing. Yeah, he's about to launch his, his new season that he took like 18 months kind of in between just like refreshing and getting everything back how he wanted it. The last one was like a little not funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was into it, but yeah, but it, it was wasn't very going for bizarre. Jokes. Yeah, yeah, it was like, holy shit, where the fuck's he going with this? Yeah. You know, because it was just, it really got personal and it got really kind of heavy and heady, mm -hmm. but uh, he, he's, he kills it. So you, you, you travel a lot. Do you like being on the road? I do. I also, like, I live in Portland, Oregon, and I also go down to work in, like, LA and New York quite a bit and make a couple other TV series that are, like, based in, in LA. Um, but I do like kind of getting out and exploring the world and running around and, finding different subcultures or things that are going on in sort of the underground where there's always people like yourself that have like a space that they're doing painting in and also making video production happening and making films and like knowing that that's out there and continuous and isn't part of the traditional stream of things that are getting dumped out and cranked out on a grosser scale yeah, yeah. is always kind of exciting to, to meet and connect. When I was looking at all this stuff you do, I was like, Jesus Christ, this guy like does five things a year. It's like yeah. he's all over the place. It's gotta be amazing. Um, so you're, would you consider yourself like a cinema verite documentary maker? You just kind of throw yourself in there. Do you have a plan or is it just like you just shoot from the hip and what you come out with, you figure out in the editing room? I think I certainly started out and maybe still primarily am drawn to inserting myself into situations where things that I find compelling or interesting are happening and then being there to be part of and document all that as it un unfolds. Um, I think as I've gotten through the process of making more films, I've become more conscious of like, I should make sure that I do get a shot that establishes where we are or who all the people are in the room and not just be in on close up so that it's like, fuck, I never shot that guy because I was always in tight on the other three people or whatever. So there's a, maybe a little bit more craft to it now of being conscious of coverage or mm -hmm. ways to make the edit work in the future. Um, but yeah, primarily verite, rather than like scripting things out in advance and knowing I'm gonna interview this person and try and make them talk about that because I want to connect this. Like it's, it's more exploratory or in the moment probably. Who's your favorite filmmaker? My favorite docs. filmmaker that's, that's living now doesn't do straightforward docs. It's Jem Cohen who um, made the film Instrument and a film called Museum Hours that came out this past year that's a, okay. a, more of a drama that he wrote um, or explored with these actors. So he, he's the most fascinating filmmaker active and living to me. He, his body of work over the years is remarkable and, and full of great stuff. Yeah. What was your favorite documentary this year? Man, um, there was a lot of good ones. Yeah, there were a lot of good ones. Is it called The Act of Killing? Oh the, my God, I just, yeah. oh Jesus Christ, that fucking film was so good. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Like, I love documentary f stuff because narrative stuff just is trying to imitate this real stuff, you know? And then yeah. TV's version of real stuff is complete fake real stuff. They just get people that are bizarre <laughs> and make right. throw them into these scenarios. Yeah. But this whole thing about like film, you know, when you watch like Brothers Keeper or something, yeah. you know, it's like, holy shit, like you can't make this stuff up, you know? And you're involved in that all the time. Yeah. It must be uh, amazing being able to make a living at it. It's hard. It's a hard thing to do. Yeah, it can be tricky. Maybe the maybe the way I've pulled it off is to just kind of do too many things at once or overextend myself. <laughs> and uh, but I just I'm always you know fascinated to keep making personal projects and then funding them by taking straight work like mm -hmm. um, for things that I know or have like a schedule and someone's paying yeah. for to. Yeah. Um, anything you want to promote? You got anything coming up? You want to? Yeah, I've got a couple of things. I directed a comedy series for Comedy Central called Meltdown. Uh, that's sort of a combination of documentary format at a small stand-up space with these great comedians, Jonah Ray and Kumail Nanjiani. It's a place in in Los Angeles. It's it's sort of in the back room, very much like this, like, but it's in the back room of what would it like a comic book store. So it's like where they normally would be like storing poster boxes and stuff. That people started setting up folding chairs and doing like a stand-up comedy show. And it just became the place that everyone in town would go try out new material or if Louis C.K. was visiting L.A., mm -hmm. he would kind of pop in and, you know, work out new ideas or bits. 
Hold on to your balls because squishy, squishy. That's, I don't remember just, what I said. Even if you don't remember, do you think it was squishy, squishies? Well, these guys are comedy nerds. I mean that in the most affectionate way possible. They're clearly running one of the most successful alternative shows in town. Who's who's releasing this slit film? I'm doing where, it all myself. Where it's where been really oh, fun. Oh, really? You're yeah, I uh, kind of funded and shot the film as a personal project over the years, and then when we're done, like decided not to submit it to film festivals and do that traditional route of trying to find distribution. But we're putting a like a version of it in a box set that the band's reissuing of that record Spiderland. And then otherwise I'm just kind of calling up places that I thought were cool and cities that I wanted to go visit and arranging screenings and, you know, sometimes bringing the band out and sometimes just me so you're going just and really doing it yourself. Yeah, it's been wild. Like we're here at Philomoca in Philly, which is like a great mm -hmm. space that, that Eric has a excellent projection and, you know, a, sold out crowd coming out to see stuff and yeah yeah he's actually doing great stuff over there yeah it's awesome that he's bringing a lot of interesting stuff through there so it's really good and it's it's not your your normal stuff mm -hmm. so which is awesome you know yeah well yeah thanks for talking oh dude it was a pleasure seriously yeah any filmmaker that that kind of makes a living at, especially documentary filmmakers like just blows me away and it's so inspiring and uh, i love a lot of projects that you do and Keep going. All right, next time. Yeah.